Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell, and today I'm going to talk about something that I think is, in my opinion, one of the biggest scams this country tries to pull on its citizens, and especially in healthcare, which is kind of my background, although I'm in the finance area, and that's the flu shot scam. Now, why am I calling this thing a scam? You know, I took the flu shot a couple of times back in 19, geez, 1989 and 1990, and I got really sick both times. And everyone said, well, you know, you inject a little bit of the flu serum into you. It's supposed to build up antibodies. But I got really sick for at least a week both times. And I had this cough that just wouldn't go away two years in a row. And I never wanted to take that bad boy again. I did have the flu when I was in eighth grade. But then the entire school had the flu. I mean, you know, to me, that's an epidemic when an entire school goes down. But you know what? They're calling these things epidemic now, and, and there's this frenzy of stuff saying, oh, everyone's going to, you know, we could all die from this thing or whatever. Let me give you a statistic. Can I give you a statistic? Here's a statistic. In 2011, because that's the earliest that you have for a yearly statistic, it takes them three years to put these things together. I don't really know why. But in 2011, out of a population of 330 million people, just the United States now, 5.5 million people went to the doctor or to a hospital claiming that they had the flu. Now, that comes to about 1.6% of the population. Now, how many of those people actually got the flu? Actually, truly, for the entire country, for the entire year of 2011, around 78,000 people. That comes to, and I'm looking at my numbers because I did the math, that comes to 1.4% of the people who went to a doctor or a hospital thinking they had flu, and it eventually comes to 0.02% of the American population. And you know how many people passed away from the flu that year? About 100. And the people who passed away were sickly people and little children, mainly older, sick people, which basically says that, you know, if you're somewhat healthy and you got the flu, you survived it. Here's the thing. A lot of the people who got the flu took the shot. They didn't get it from the shot. What happens is that every year throughout the country, they have these different regions and they try to predict what strain of flu they think is going to hit. And then that's the flu that they get. And it takes about four months to make a a flu shot for the you know for these different strains and that's what they give you so here's the thing they're guessing what strain of flu they think is going to hit where so what has happened this year this year they've got a strain of flu that has mutated from pretty much any strain of flu that they thought throughout the entire country so they've just figured this out and the thing is they can't do anything about it because it's like I said, it takes four months to develop something to try to combat that. And by the time they actually can now develop this thing, flu season will be over. Because there's this particular time of flu season. I don't know really where they ever came up with this idea. But supposedly, flu season is considered beginning of December through the end of March. That's full flu season. Yes, you can get the flu shot uh, in October and you know such but the true flu season is considered december 1st through march 30th yeah 30 days has a temple april june mark 31st <laughs> I had to do my little thing there. so now this thing here i'm not saying that if i'm 50 65 oh lord have mercy i'm not saying that if i get to 65 i'm not going to take a flu shot at 65 because now you know you're in that area where maybe you need to watch out a little bit more for your health, especially if maybe you, you have other health issues. But I think that overall, th this is one of the biggest scams. Now, last year when I was working out of town, even though I was not working in a hospital, I'm working in an office park at this hospital system, but I'm in an office park. They made me, because I refused to get a flu shot, wear a mask from December to the end of March. I had to wear a mask. I mean, talk about your scarlet letter. Now, a lot of other people just took the shot. Why? Because they didn't want anyone looking at them and thinking they're not team players. I'm an independent consultant. I'm president of my own company. I'm incorporated. So, you know, I do what I want to do with my body. This is just how this works. I'm not even in patient care. 
Now, my wife is in one of those situations right now where she's working at this hospital. She travels for her job as well, but she works in the hospital. And she already had a contract for, you know, to work through April. But now this particular hospital is saying, well, we want her to go see one of our doctors to see if she's allergic to this shot because we want her to have this shot because we're having all our employees get the shot. My wife went to a doctor here in town, has this thing saying she cannot take the flu shot. But they're saying, nope, we want her to see one of our doctors. And they say if it turns out that they agree with her own doctor that she can't take the shot, they have something else that they developed that they said that she would have to take. Are you kidding me? She works independently also. And, and I'm sitting there thinking, are you, are you nuts? She has said she would wear the mask the entire time if it comes to that. But this other thing is a scam. You want to know what kind of scam it is? I'm going to tell you. New York State just announced that the flu strain is prevalent in the state. It's prevalent. So now anyone who hasn't gotten the flu shot who works in healthcare has to wear a mask. Now, I don't know if business offices have to do it, but everyone has to wear this thing. So, the thing is, in Onondaga County, which is where I live, which the population is around 250,000, you know how many people have the flu? 11. <laughs> 11 people. That's 0.004%. 11 people. This is prevalent. Come on, really? I, it, it's ridiculous. Now, I kind of understand if you're dealing you know, with patients who might have different sicknesses, which they do all the time, by the way, and they're worried that you may catch something from them. Okay, wearing a mask, not a big deal, but prevalent? I mean, my goodness. One of my friends posted earlier today on Facebook that there's over 10,000 cases of whooping cough in California, in the L.A. area, of all things whooping cough, something that a lot of people thought was gone. Now, to me, that's a big deal. 10,000 cases, and that's just already in a you know, city like Los Angeles, where those people are kind of packed in, you know. So to me, that's kind of a big deal. How come no one is really talking about that except in L.A.? You know, that's a number that quick where you can sit there and say, okay, maybe there's something to this. But this flu shot thing, scam. Now, a couple of other questions, just to throw this out there. If this thing is so important, then how come everyone who works in healthcare who has to get the shot, or who they want to get the shot, has to sign two waivers? Know what the waivers are? The waivers are, if you get sick, you won't sue the hospital, and if you get sick, you can't sue the people who make the flu shot. The government basically passed that thing. So, if you get sick from the flu, and you die, or you're seriously injured, you, you, you're you just out of luck. Too bad. You get no disability. You get nothing. You can't sue anybody. You're just out of luck. Your family is done. Is that covered by life insurance? I don't know, but that's not the point. The point is that the government gives carte blanche to these companies to make this stuff without necessarily knowing, one, if it's going to work, or two, if it's going to kill somebody. They don't care. It's a scam. It just is. Um, I had some other thing I was going to say, but you know what? I'm going to stop here because I want to know what you guys think about this flu shot thing. Do you really think that it's fair that in some states, in some places, people are being forced to take this shot and have to sign these waivers? You know, I mean, I don't want to get a flu shot. Not getting one. Luckily, I work for myself. But if I'm working in a hospital and I, I'm forced to take this shot or lose my job, which New York State actually tried to do three years ago and then they ran out of the stuff, <laughs> morons. But if you have to take the shot, but they make you sign the waiver, is that fair? Doesn't that sound a little tricky? Oh, here's the other thing I just want to add. A lot of hospitals are kind of enforced this kind of thing because the federal government, Medicare, people, so don't blame this on Obama, it had nothing to do with him. Uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services came out with this thing a couple years ago saying that if hospitals didn't take precautions like this to make people either wear masks or get the flu shot, they could have their reimbursements reduced by 2%. There you go. But, but the rule is only for people who work with patients. So if that's the case, 
then what's the point of someone who's working in a business office who's nowhere near patients having you take the shot? It's just a question. So let me know your thoughts on what I'm calling the flu shot scam or hoax. I'm not going to call it a hoax because see, I know some people are saved by this, but the way they're pushing it for the numbers that they have isn't justified. I mean, my goodness, this is its own little version of Ebola. <laughs> you know, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, this was my rant for the night. I'm Mitch Mitchell. I hope to see y'all and please let me know what you think. Goodbye.